Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to High Media TV. I'm your host, from High Media TV, and today we have a uh, audio only podcast. I wanted to talk about a little bit about Black Myth Wukong. I don't have any footage for you because I was playing on my buddy's PlayStation 4, and my capture card unfortunately was not set up at the time. So we're just going to be going over uh, an overview of my first hour playing the game. So uh, it's been heralded. At, I've heard mixed things in the Soulsborne community. Some people saying it's a great Soulsborne, some people saying it isn't. And I would say that the, I would say that it is, I understand the comparisons of it being a Soulsborne game. I don't necessarily agree that it is. I know that like when you die, you respawn out of the place, but the, um, the punish, the punishment for dying is not in line with a Soulsborne thing where you, uh, can lose progress that you have made if you do if you uh die too much in the sense of a currency or or what have you that you lose when you pass there like the consequences for dying are non-existent if i'm being perfectly honest in fact if you do die quite a bit you there's usually some ads in between you and the last thing that killed you unless you're like in front of a particularly important boss and you will just constantly gain more and more levels killing things even as it can be slow going at times and you will eventually just get enough power trying to get back to the boss over time that you eventually do end up just breaking through it becomes sort of a non-issue in that regard but let's actually talk about the gameplay itself so the other thing that i don't think necessarily makes it a souls borny game is is that when you do dodge um you don't get any iframes, which is a learning curve that is actually not as bad as you might think. Um, if you perfect to dodge, um, I, you basically can dodge anything, but even then, like I, it, it's been temperamental. Some things, you if you dodge in the wrong direction, you will get punished for it. So it is a lot more action oriented and a lot more, you know, uh, the dodging is a lot more methodical, which is fine. Um, the the actual mechanics of the combat using the staff and then attacking things and all of that is actually very, very good. The combat fe does feel very satisfying and rewarding in that sense. Um, uh, and, you know, there's plenty of little secrets and stuff you can find with time, and it is, uh, I'm, I'm generally uh, fairly happy with it in that regard. Now, uh, moving on to some of the bosses, um, there are, uh, the first boss I thought was interesting, this is also where you get your first kind of, like, power, which is a immobilized mechanic, which is very, very fun and useful, although it does not regenerate as fast as I personally would like it to, I kind of expect heavily in the immobilization tree, utilizing that, um, I just think that, you know, it's as a, as an ability is very, quite interesting and fun. Um, I will say that uh, there are other mechanics like scouting ahead. You can you can transform into animals and things of that nature to kind of scout ahead, especially since there are places where you will have more aggressive and difficult enemies. Um, I came across my first enemy that was particularly difficult to beat, and I, in true, you know, Soulsborne player fashion, was like, I'm beat my head against this brick wall until I beat it, and until I kind of realized that the kit of this particular boss was, as the kids say, built different. And so, have you said that shit in years? What am I fucking saying? Um, but ultimately, the premise here is, you know, like there there are very much enemies that you aren't going to be able to beat immediately. Backtracking is encouraged, and they have mechanics to allow you to advance without necessarily suffering the consequences of having to aggro and run away from a pretty hefty boss. Um, I stopped playing at the first major boss, the uh, uh, giant white wolf thing. It's within the first hour of the game. Like, there's nothing. I'm not. I'm not really like, spoiling anything story-wise here. Obviously, um, I got. I've gotten pretty close to beating it. I think I just. It was late at night, and I just kind of got over trying over repeatedly. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'll get take this shot when I'm fresh in the morning. Um, ultimately, the and the last thing I want to talk about, as many of you have seen, is probably the opening scene of the game, which is very grandiose. You play as. So the thing you have to remember is that you aren't playing as Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. You are playing as one of his many uh, historical disciples 
that are trying to resurrect his body. And you have to essentially go collect the relics that give him that power. I don't know what the ending is. I don't know what happens. But I personally have a prediction that the legacy of Sun Wukong will be um, inherited by your character. And you will become the new Sun Wukong, essentially. Although I could be completely wrong about that. You know, obviously, it is what it is. By and large, uh, Sun Wuk Black Myth Wukong, I think, like, my first hour with it was very, very engaging. I know that things go can get even crazier as you unlock more powers, get more level ups. The It has the uh, a tr a more traditional level, multiple level up trees and equipment. You can just flip one of the things that I do like a lot about the game is I like it when... You know, souls like games attempt, or when like like put more convenience without having to travel as much. So, for example, I like that in Dark Souls One, you can buy boxes that basically allow you to upgrade all of your stuff at a bonfire, and you don't have to hike back to Andre or the Giant in Honor Londo. I like that you can craft stuff, level up, rest edit your skills, do everything. I like that when you go to your equivalent of a bonfire here, which are these shrines, they, you A, have travel back and forth out of the gate, and B, um, your ability to uh, edit and update your character, you get A, pretty quickly on, and B, is all in that one spot. You don't have to go back to a specific hub point, you don't have to do any of that. NPCs that you meet seem, as far as so far, to follow you as you go and have specific story interactions. This feels more like a journey rather than you're taking rather like like in a more linear fashion rather than a backtracking and going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's mostly what I how I kind of view it in that regard. So uh, Black Myth Wukong, I think, is a lot of fun. I'm going to probably spend a little bit more time with it uh, once I... You know, get to the later game. If I get to the later game, I will probably do a more thorough review. I just wanted to sort of give my initial thoughts with my first hour of Black Myth Wukong. I like it very much, and uh, I hope to talk to you guys more about it later on. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to, you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hibmedia.gg slash discord. Discord link's there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hibmedia.gg slash tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing and a dollar a month is included to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you and have a great day.